Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to my third brand new Let's Play. Getting back into the channel in a big way by starting a butt-ton of new Let's Plays. Most of which is stuff I've really wanted to play for a while now. And, man, oh man, the soundtrack on this title screen is just incredible. It is absolutely the best. <laughs> and my Let's Play today is, as you can see here, <coughs> Elder Kings 2. <coughs> the Crusader Kings 3 sequel to the Elder Kings mod for CK2, which was one of my favorite Crusader Kings 2 mods of all time. And the fact that I love the Elder Scrolls games so much helps with that, because as the name implies, it takes Crusader Kings 3 and sets everything in the Elder Scrolls universe. And it would be easier to explain if I hit the new game button. So, here's some differences between in Elder Kings 1 and Elder Kings 2. First of all, there are two start dates now. In Elder Kings 1, you only had the 450 start date. Everything's already gone to pot. In Elder Kings 2, we have a second start date ten years before, when the second Empire hadn't quite finished falling apart yet. And the Potentate, the guys who were in charge of Cyrodiil, still had half of it, although they were fighting a coalition over here with the Kalovian Estates, trying to depose them. And there's plenty of breakaway stuff, and this is basically all they have, but still, Cyrodiil is far more unified than in the 450 start date. There are also some differences it's in the fact that Skyrim is slightly more unified, though it's still a hot mess. And all of these different scenarios, as you can probably tell, is just, it throws you to a separate part of the map. But, the fact of the matter is, I'm going to be starting in the 450 start date because I've never done a full playthrough of Elder Kings before, so I wanted to be able to start in somewhere a lot more open with more options so I could actually do stuff. And we're going to go with the play as any ruler or create your own thing. Because it'll let me, for one thing, look around the map a little more and show off just how much of a disaster zone everything is. As you can see, we have all of these random aisles and stuff over here, which I don't actually know what that is. But, if you have a look around, you'll notice that the whole map is basically splintered as fuck. And in fact, in the 450 start date, Eastern and Western Skyrim still exist, but they've lost some ground. A second. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that sometime. 
just tweak the audio levels on my recording software because the soundtrack in this game will really kick up sometimes. I could just lower the music some more in game, but if I do that, when it gets to the quiet levels, you won't be able to hear it, and I want to be able to listen to the music. Anyways, as I was saying, things really are a bit of a mess all over. Daggerfall is being Daggerfall, and they're splintered or as fuck right now. In fact, the most unified parts of Daggerfall at this point are Evermore, Wayrest, sorry, I say Daggerfall, I mean High Rock. Most unified parts are Evermore, Wayrest, and Daggerfall. Everything else is just a bunch of tiny splinter kingdoms that will gobble each other up and be gobbled up in turn. Hammerfell is, if anything, worse than debt. Hammerfell is, if anything, worse off than High Rock, which is saying something. As this is High Rock. Basically, the Elder Scrolls version of if Game of Th Thrones was set in the Elder Scrolls universe, that's Daggerfall. And Hammerfell is somehow worse. That's an achievement. Not necessarily a good achievement, but it is an achievement. And as I said, Skyrim is quite splintered right now as well. In the 440 start date, Eastern and Western Skyrim held most of everything. And there was a Nord on the throne of Markarth and the Reach as a whole. The Reach appears to no longer be a unified kingdom. And we have a Reach King again, in Markarth at least. And all the surrounding places, because I guess they led a rebellion against him. And there's a lot of breakaway places as well. In addition to that, Whiterun, Whiterun is still independent, and at this point, they appear to have done the thing that probably every Whiterun player does at the start of a campaign, and annexed Riften. Sorry, Riverwood. As Riverwood will just become a vassal if you ask nicely in the other start date. So they've obviously done that. Ten years later, and they have a new king from the last start date. White runs a pretty cool position because you're literally at the center of everything, but you don't actually have necessarily any problems with your neighbors. And are most decidedly a neutral power in the middle of everything, which is you a great opportunity to unify Skyrim under yourself. That might be an interesting play to try for, but... But, 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 but. Unifying Skyrim under Whiterun is not what we're going for today. No, what I'm going to try doing is recreating an old original playthrough I did 
ages ago on the CK2 version. Hmm. Now, I did originally have a saved ruler, but that was in an older version of the mod, so they no longer count, apparently, from what I can tell. And I'm just going to set them to be heterosexual just so the game doesn't accidentally make us gay or something. And our dynasty. We are Marius of House Marcellus. So. I need to create a new banner. That's the primary color works. Now let's find the half decent emblem. An Elder King specific one would be cool. Let's see, what is that? Mm. Nope. There we go. Like that one, the tertiary color. Prime. No, I'll just stick with this. for our dynasty and I'm going to customize our title I think just a little bit We could just start over and make something I actually like. Let's go with that. And the logo. Let's go with that. I think it looks cool, is my only reasoning. And I don't see any reason to change the title. 
of the place we're hanging out in, so I won't. All right, then. We've finished making Marius. So say hello, everyone. This is our character, Marius Marcellus. He was born under the sign of the Lord. His education was that of a brilliant strategist. Oh, he's more of into the military solutions to things than having someone stabbed. <laughs> Personally, he is lustful, diligent, brave, ambitious, just, forgiving, and calm. I'm more doing this for the role-playing thing. I don't particularly care that it's massively overpowered. Other than that, he is a diplomat. An aspiring blade master, strategist, and administrator, intelligent, yeah, I'm gonna take off strong because I feel like that's a bit much. A legitimized bastard, a logistician, and a battle mage. As you can see from this, he has quite high diplomacy. His marshals just st through the roof. And actually, I think I'm going to lower his stewardship a little bit, because he was seeming to be a little too much of a Mary Sue there. His intrigue is absolutely shit. He has no talent when it comes to spying or assassination or anything like that. Learning, he's just average and he's pretty good in a one on one fight. As for Arcana, he's not that good with magic. Despite being trained as a battle mage, he ended up being more on the battle side of things than the mage side. And he is 24 years old. Has no sons or daughters. Let's finalize this and get him out of prison. So they, before I do that, I'm going to save you, Marius. Now you can get out of prison. And finally, let's start the game. Over in the heartlands. There's plenty of stuff to deal with right at the start. We can hold court. Let's see. We have no heir. I'll have to sort that out eventually. As it turns out, the Protectorate of the Heartlands is actually an elective title. So I can vote for it. And we have no patron deity. Inspired person can be sponsored. We aren't married. 
stronger autocratic vassals. Our realm will lose land when vassal dies. You can declare wars. Currently field about 2,600 men. And yes, we have vassals who are stronger than us, which is not spectacular. Or really? Hmm. Also, my spy master despises me. That's bad. That's very bad. Now, as far as our first moves go, when we get started, because I still have this stuff to sort out, and we need to get our spy master to like us. At the very least. This higher military strength than liege thing is concerning, to say the least. But our immediate goals <clears throat> is to conquer some of this surrounding land. so that we eventually have all of the territories surrounding the Imperial City. That's going to take a while because these fellows are dukes and therefore have multiple lands to their name. So we're going to sort of have to chip away at our surrounding neighbors for a while. That's going to be how things will primarily go. Also, as I mentioned, we have powerful vassals who dislike us. Let's say the imperial, ba our imperial battle mage, the imperial guard here, dislikes us. Higher military strength. According to this, our strength is similar to ours. But yes, looking at this, we have one, two, three. We have four vassals who hate us. Minus a hundred. Somehow they think they have higher military strength to us. Even this guy who can only field 530 men compared to our 2,000, and this guy who can only field 510, they think that they have higher military strength than us. That's adorable. Though, at the moment, the one I'm actually concerned with is our spy master. Why they think they have higher strength than us, I'm not sure. We will start this out by attempting to sway her over into liking us. Because 
if there's one person you do not want to have hating you, it's the spy master. That's going to be our first thing. I'll have to fix the no air next time and lifestyle. We want military, I think. And strategy. Focus more on the military strategic thinking side of things. That's what I'm going for. We're going down the strategist route. Organized march. Hit and run. Which is probably foolish of me because I did that before checking what we've actually got. We have a person who can be sponsored. I'll check that another time. Our patron deity, though. I think we want our patron deity to be Akatosh, purely for political reasons, since Akatosh is basically uh, the patron god of the empire, and Marius wants to connect himself to that lineage and attempt to give his rule some legitimacy, since his status as a legitimized bastard makes that questionable. So yes, we will become a follower of Akatosh. Sort by opinion. Okay, no, let's not do that. Come on. Let's see. Battle Mage, uh, Spy Master are the two that are the most concerning right now. <laughs> yes. Well, we've had a decent start. <laughs> now. We have some political issues to sort out, but soon enough we can begin our efforts at conquest in earnest. But that will be for next time. If you've enjoyed this, then Please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to see more like this. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time when our expansion will begin in earnest. See you then, folks. See you then.